Welcome to Ghostly. Can tarot be used to predict the future? As always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Wow, it's 2020 already. Can you believe it? Very exciting. Uh, We got a lot of plans for Ghostly this year, so make sure if you haven't yet that you hit that subscribe button. And if you're on YouTube listening to us, hit that little bell next to the subscribe button to make sure that you're never left in the dark about new ghostly episodes. Oh yeah, we've got so many plans. I This year we are working hard to plan ahead, get some yes. amazing research, some amazing interviews. Yes. I'm so excited for all of the things that we're going to talk about this year. I am too. Uh, we started planning out our first quarter. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I already have good. ideas for the second quarter. Like I just, it's... I just got a listener uh, a message last night about a topic that I'm so excited to oh, do. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't it, see that. Well, I told you about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. But it's but we're already so booked that yeah. it'll be like late spring before we wow. get to that. But please still keep sending us your ideas and your stories. It's uh, We love it. So to get to this episode, though, yeah. we have one of the most amazing topics to start 2020 off right. Woohoo! Tarot. Tarot. I know some people believe it's real, and I want to explore it. Uh, also, if you go over to our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash ghostly podcast, or you could just do a search for one word ghostly podcast, we have a special treat uploaded there for you. We do. We, well, Rebecca mm-hmm. did a tarot reading for ghostly. So find out if her predictions of how our year is going to turn out is right. And next year, we can compare notes to see how accurate her predictions really are. Okay. Well, again, you're saying it's me, but it was the both of us interpreting this reading. I knew you wouldn't be able to just sit there <laughs> and not make your own interpretations. I like was looking up a last thing and you're like, well, I don't care. I'm doing my own interpretation. <laughs> well, I didn't did want it to own. just be quiet and look at the camera <laughs> while you're looking up something. Well, I would have filled the airspace, but that's fine. <laughs> I like hearing what you're... Yours is a more negative view of... It was uh, not negative. Reading. It just is that it's going to end. But <laughs> you have to go to YouTube to watch this video. Uh, our video quality is not the best. Well, we We are podcasters. We're not videographers yeah i yeah. you know we have cheap cameras and stuff like that so. yeah well we'll get there and uh okay well it's time for listener mail yes absolutely so you can send in any of your stories to info at ghostlypodcast.com and we might even read them on the show like rebecca's gonna do right now yes we i love hearing your stories they're so important and i want this year to be filled with listener stories and listener ideas so uh you know this is a a, a pact between us both yeah. so i'm and, so excited and if for your you don't stuff. If you don't think that I went skeptical enough on a topic and you are more skeptical than me, write that in. Absolutely. Well, Send last, that in to us, Nick last episode, <laughs> Last episode, we actually had a, a skeptic we did. listener mail. Yeah. So again, maybe you had something creepy happen to you and then you figured out what it was and it wasn't supernatural. Those are interesting too. So. Or maybe you know why this particular woman in white is in this story. There you go. Send it to us. Send it to us. We'll read it. Absolutely. All right. So this one is another story from our listener, Adam. We had some stories. Yeah. A few episodes ago. Um, and he had a lot. So these all kind of build on each other, I think. Um, so I think last time they had a thing with the garage door working on its own and the dog being okay with it. The dog being weirded out by it, I thought. But. I thought he was okay with it. Like, he usually barks. Oh. But this time he didn't bark. He was just like, okay. Okay. Maybe that was it. I don't know. Signifying it might be a family member. Oh, oh right. Because they had both lost people. See, I remember stuff. You remember stuff. Okay. So this one is about uh, a thing called a sensi, which I think I've heard of those. It, I think they like poof the scent yeah. into the air. Yes. Right. Okay. So, all right. How, how does it do it again? 
poof <laughs> into okay. the air. Does it does it make that sound? Does it say poof? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it does actually. Okay, wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, so here's what Adam had to say. Our Sensi that we had in our bedroom that we had just bought randomly blew up on us. Wow. Yeah. Not the bulb, but the actual electrical cord. I started using it as a nightlight when these events started happening. So like starting with the mm-hmm. stuff uh, because they seem to focus around me and seem to keep happening in the bedroom. Oh, that's right. Because we also had, he had some shadow people. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. I woke up again at 2.45 a.m., mm. which is interesting because that's pretty close to 3 a.m., which and is like the witching hour. That's usually the time that I get up to go to the bathroom. Mm. Mm. So I woke up again at 2.45 a.m., and there was no sensi light on. Upon looking at it, I realized how lucky I was because it actually burned the dresser a bit. If it had burned the dresser a bit more, who knows, it may have caught fire. This was a brand new Sensi, brand new bulb, and the only thing that plugged into that circuit, and the only thing plugged into that circuit, so there's no reason why it should have been overloaded to act like that. And uh, he did give us pictures, so uh, I'll put them in the show notes. I'll put them in the show notes for us to see. So when I first read this, I I was reading it pretty quickly. I was on the, I was getting off the train actually, and I read it as Sensei. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so I, I totally different idea. <laughs> we have a sensei in our bedroom. <laughs> just sitting well, there. who doesn't? Yeah, you know, right. I mean, Miyagi's in mine. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. So, as far as polls go, we didn't have one for our latest episode because it was our holiday special and we didn't debate because we didn't think you guys wanted to hear us arguing and stuff during Christmas. Yeah. No, did you just move right on there? Because, well, I mean, obviously we're not going to debate Adam's story, but yeah. um, I, I just wanted to thank him for sending yeah, it in. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And, I, and there's some more coming at oh, some point. Well, I, I have a lot I could say, <laughs> but I choose not to. Okay, well, we'll, we'll move forward. So, like, yeah, no like, pro- like a question I would ask, like, did you buy it off of Amazon? <laughs> you know, was it one of the cheaper ones? I don't know, but I'm not. I'm not going to debate it. Oh, it's, no, we it's don't debate listener stories, and we didn't debate last episode. So I am all out of sorts here. Yeah, I know, right? No polls, nothing, nothing. Yep. Wow. <laughs> so I guess we just go right into the ghost story, but we don't really have a ghost story for this. It, it is a little different because it's tarot cards. Yeah. Right. So to me, I thought instead of a traditional ghost story, I do something more similar to what we did with Ouija boards or okay. Ouija boards. So if you haven't listened to that episode, go back in the catalog and listen to it because that was so cool. I love it that was. episode. Uh, but instead uh, of talking about a ghost story, we're going to do the some of the rules for reading tarot, just like we did the rules for using a Ouija board. And, you know, like, I I read through some of your rules here, and even though I don't believe, I disagree, and I was taught differently to Right, to there's reading. So, so many. I might interject at certain times. I was just going to say, like, these are just some of the rules that I thought of, and I actually thought of more when we were doing our video. Okay. So go listen there for some more. Um, and then, yeah, I actually have my notes here to, uh, to ask you to please chime in with any thoughts or differences of opinion for readings okay so first thing i would say is to pick your own deck so pick one that speaks to you so this is something that might be a little controversial for some people because there's a lot of rumors out there that you your first deck should be something that's gifted to you i did not hear that yeah that when i first wanted to do tarot that's actually what i was told like oh you can't buy your first deck i didn't hear that about the first deck i heard that about any deck well actually i suppose there's that too that you just any like it has to be a gift for you but the problem with that of course then is then you're just if you you might be wanting to do it but you just kind of have to sit around and wait for someone to like know that you want to do it and gift you one so it, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. So I, I, I think this comes with um, them wanting you to have a teacher. Well, I think it's that. I think so actually, and I know you're going to bring up Alistair Crowley 
later. Yeah. But one of the things I was reading from someone who was like, this is a stupid rule, um, was basically saying it is a historical thing, though, where it used to be like you you would have to be taught. Mm-hmm. Like they wanted to keep it very mystical, very yeah. secret. Only special people could do tarot readings. So, right, you'd have to be given it by your sensei, <laughs> so basically. The same uh, was true for um, Wicca mm-hmm. uh, un- until Scott Cuttingham came along and wrote a book about solitary witches. Before that, you had to be in a coven. So you could have an interest in it, but if you lived in a rural area that didn't have any covens around or that you didn't know of any, they were secretive, you would not be a part of it. So it's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Magic magic has a way of doing that. And I guess I would just say for me, I was gifted my first deck because, again, I had kind of expressed interest. And so someone, you know, she she bought me one. Mm-hmm. and um, And I liked that deck, but I didn't love it. And so oh. I kind of got to this point where someone was like, no, you really don't have to be bought a deck. Like you can go and buy your own. And I actually went to a store that it was like a, almost like a tarot card bookshop. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, definitely a mystical shop or whatever, but they mm-hmm. had these big binders and you could look through the binders and they had examples of all the decks. Yeah. And so then you could find the one that you wanted without having to obviously just like look at the box what's the what's the weirdest deck that you saw when you were looking through that i don't know that's a lot of years ago i remember one of cats <laughs> <laughs> it was all cats in poses of, that would be of, a little of, silly of, i think like you know like the high priestess it would be a cat <laughs> <laughs> just in a pose or right, anyways i'm sorry no but i anyway so i i I loved it. I picked my deck, and it, it's it's my go to uh, go to one. Um, it's although, the Spiral Tarot. Although you did not use that when you did. No, we reading. used your deck because you wanted to my use deck. your deck. Well, because my deck was a little bit more light, so people could see it. Well, and it's whereas a little... your decks are very dark. And I know it's not your deck isn't officially traditional as far as like the whole yeah. rider weight or whatever, but it's to me it looks more similar mm-hmm. to traditional. Maybe. So and I didn't want it to, you know, be accused of anything. I'm still accusing you. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right. So rule one, pick your own deck. Pick one that speaks to you. Don't feel like you have to wait for somebody. Okay. All right. Number two, study But don't feel bad if you don't understand everything right away. Like you do need to commit, right, to be open to learning and to make a point of learning, which I did at one point in my life many years ago when I was, Mm -hmm. you know, college age. There was a point where I didn't have to look up any any meanings. Like I just knew what the cards meant. Like I studied enough. Um, uh, I would have to to do that again if I really wanted to, to read it all the time. But um, but also just know that it you can't just memorize them. Like, yeah. you, you know, it takes time. It takes study. It's okay for a while if you have to keep looking up stuff. In fact, it's good. You know, just like any teacher, right? Anytime you do anything, even any good psychiatrist, any anybody, you're, you're not going to know everything and you need to always be open to learning. Sure. Yeah. Uh, when I first started to study the tarot, uh, I would take a card every day mm-hmm. and I would meditate on that card. I was big into meditation. I still am, but mm-hmm. uh, I would meditate for a good 20 minutes, half hour on each one of those cards and try to feel what it what it meant to me, what it, what it made me think of. Now, did you do that with just the major arcana oh. cards? All cards. All of the cards. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of cards. Before I did a, even a single reading. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've read that too. That's to 78 like, cards. 78. We're going to talk about that. We are. Yeah. All right. Uh, just two more here that I okay. wanted to go over a little bit more hardcore into the actual readings. So at the start of a reading, so you, you're you the reader and then there's the questioner is the mm-hmm. person who's getting the reading. So uh I like to have the questioner shuffle the cards themselves while mm-hmm. thinking of their question. Um, I will say I read there are some people that are very much like they don't like others to touch their cards. But for the most part, mm. people seem to agree it's good to pass that energy with the cards. So having the questioner touch the cards, sure. even if it's just to cut the cards or whatever. Sure. But I don't 
I don't think it's necessary because I've done I did some readings over the phone mm. that actually, you know, worked out okay. And okay. It, it it was a landline too. Wow. Right? Well maybe that's what it was. It was it was connected. Yeah. Well we yeah. know demons can go through phone lines, so mm. Mm. Can they? <laughs> Is that how you get a computer virus? I, hey, listen, we read some stories when we were doing <laughs> our, our demon episodes, our exorcism episodes. Um, sometimes I'll pass the cards over a flame um, before giving them to the questioner to cleanse very, them. Very theatrical. Very too. theatrical. But the part of that was because I used to do readings at a party every year where I would have like 10 people. So I wanted to kind of clean the cards for mm-hmm. every person. Okay. Uh, and then when you're picking up the cards after you shuffle or they shuffle, um, give them the option to cut the cards and then be sure to keep them in the same direction. And then this was what I remembered when we were doing our reading, which is uh, I always try to touch them with my right hand mm-hmm. only. And when I lay them out again, it's just that like you turn it directly over so that you're not switching, whether it's upside down or reversed or sure. straight. Yeah. And then that's kind of my last rule. I guess I just went right into that, which was keep them the same directions um, and, uh, because it, I've read that it doesn't matter what direction they are, but I think for most people, they think it does. So if they're upside down, they're either muted or opposite. Yeah. Uh, I had some other rules that I added into this. Ooh, yeah. Um, for me, I never did a reading on myself. Oh, whereas I love to do readings for myself. Yeah. Uh, so that was one of my rules is that I couldn't do a reading for myself, I could never accept money for doing readings. Now, I know a lot of people do, but I felt like for some reason, my gift would be gone if I did that. (laughs) I don't feel that I was gifted now, but I did at that time. I felt like, no, I I can never accept money for doing this. Mm. And um, my last rule, I had to make up. This is one that I made up. I didn't hear from anybody. I had to make it up. Because one person wanted me to give them readings like every day. Oh, I think this might come up in our debate too. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, no, that's a good well, rule though to mention. I said that I would only do it once every every uh, cycle of the moon. Okay. So if it was on a full moon, it would have to be another full moon before I would do it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and, and it worked. You know, I, I we're probably going to talk about this during the debate, but I think... There are some people that can handle readings and some people that get psychologically um, bound to this thing and they think that it's it's the the word of God yeah. and they have to you know this is this is their life they and can't do anything exactly and that is very dangerous so be careful when giving readings that you do not have any of those people even if you're getting money from them you'd probably get a lot of money from them but right um, yeah that's the temptation yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we should probably take a break. All right. That sounds good. All right. When we come back, we'll talk about the history. Mm Woohoo. Hey, true believers, it's Dr. David Hickney. That's right. I'm a legit PhD. Anyway, there's still a butt-ton of truth out there, so we're coming back for Season 3. It starts February 28th, 2020. 2020 is a leap year, so February has a 29th day. We don't dare post on that day because, as you know, leap day is the Spode's once quadrennial laundry day. It gets messy. Anywho, Freak of the Week Season 3, February 28th. Elizabeth will be there, too. Okay, we're back. So let's take a look at the history of tarot. Are you ready for that? I am ready for that. Super interesting. I, it is, yeah. I, I, this is not something I've looked into before. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like what you would what you would suspect. I would say, you know, like like if I could dream out a history for tarot, this would probably be it. Wow, I have no concept of what I would dream out but like if i thought of what possibly could have started it 
Okay. I, I, I do this stuff all the time. All right. Somebody says like a phrase and I'm like, I wonder where that phrase came from. And I try to imagine what I would think. <laughs> and it's never right. But this time with tarot, it is right. Okay. So tarot started as a game. The name tarot is derived from the Italian word turace, which is a game. And, and some would say a direct translation of that word would be closer to foolishness. Hmm. That could be because it's not real or because of the fool. No, it is uh, uh when my uh, my deck a big thing that that they talk about is the journey of the fool. Like Absolutely. it's that's what it is. The the whole deck is the journey of this this fool and how yep. they grow into maturity. Absolutely. So, um tarot cards get their start from regular playing cards. That's what I would have thought. That's not what I would have thought, but that's so interesting because well, they're very similar. Because they have suits and be, you know, yeah, princes and queens. And, and I've kings. actually done a reading using a deck of playing cards too. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Well, you'd probably have to Google it now because I don't, I don't remember exactly what I did, but I had all the meanings of all the cards because it stuff. doesn't have all the major. No, it cards. doesn't. It doesn't have any. Yeah, it doesn't have any of the major arcana. No. Um. So playing cards first started to be used in Europe in the mid to late 14th century. They most likely came from Egypt originally. This is a big heated thing. People um, say that they do not know where the origins of tarot started. I've watched a lot of videos where they say that. No, we, we know. We know where it started. We don't know where playing cards started from. Oh, but we're thinking it's probably Egypt. Okay. So they started with suits of batons or polo sticks, commonly known as wands, coins, commonly known as discs or pentacles, mm -hmm. swords, and cups. So we still have those decks. It just the names might be slightly different. The first documented tarot pack was from between the 1440s and 1450s. This marks the first introduction into the additional cards beyond the suits called trumps. These new decks were called Carte de Triumphi, or mm. Triumph Cards. Today, a tarot deck has 78 cards, 22 in the Major Arcana, and the Minor, minor Arcana consist of four different elements or suits, numbered from one or ace to ten. Then following with a page, knight, queen, and king. So there are 14 cards per suit. So the only cards that wouldn't be, like from the minor ar arcata and the playing cards, would be the knight card. The page was, uh, was considered to be the jack, I believe. Okay. Um, so back then, there was no consistency to, to a tarot deck. Uh, one of the first on record had about 60 cards, and another one was found in Florence that was a sort of expanded deck called the Minciate. Uh, it had 97 cards and included astrological symbols as well as the now traditional tarot, tarot cards. Well, that's interesting. I don't think I, I've heard that before. Yeah. Hmm. Do, do you have, do you know, I'm sorry, I know we haven't talked about this, but the, like, what's the, what would you say is the difference in meaning between the major cards and the minor cards? Well, some would say that they're higher secrets and lesser secrets. Ooh, yeah. Like yeah. I've heard, like the so the the ones that re the relate the minor, right? The mm -hmm. um are like day to day life, and then the major cards are more like universal truths or yeah. like representing individuals or. But the something. truth of the matter is, this is still a game that they play. They still play a game with the with the tarot decks, and that's usually in Europe. And that's the reason why the cards are all numbered because they have they you know they have value to it. Interesting. Just like regular playing cards do. Hmm. So in the 15th century, we find our first condemnation of tarot. <gasps> this was by a Dominican preacher, but was mostly against the cards because they were used for gambling. So again, the game, but not anything supernatural at that time. So kind of like with uh, uh, what was our the twenty seven club, 
Yes. And Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson. And yeah. how the at the the clubs the people would go to the clubs at night and the ju- juke joints. The juke joints, yeah. And then the preachers didn't like that. So yeah. I get it. This is this that's been going on for a long time. The preachers don't been, like yeah. it when we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, also they found gambling to be uh, a sin. So yeah, but, they don't I like mean, it when we have fun. I mean, we gamble every day in life. I say life is a game. Waking up is gambling. Yep. Yeah. Um, so as I said, though, Terra was a game at first and is still played sometimes in Europe. The rules for this game are mostly uh, regionally derived. Wow. I, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to look that up, how to there, play a there, tarot game. There is a whole thing on it. Um, but as I said, it, it's... It's regionally derived, so it's really hard to say this is the correct way to play it. Well, and I don't really think it would be super interesting for us to just like go through the rules of some no card game. Probably not, <laughs> right probably not. But, but I did. I did read about them, and it is interesting. And it it's kind of like a like an Uno meets poker kind of oh, thing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's huh. kind of odd. It's really weird. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to talk about tarot card readings. Okay, so this is when it starts to get a little more mystical. A little bit. Okay. Uh, Tarot card readings were really not a thing until the 1750s. Now, like Aleister Crowley would say that that's not true, and I'm going to give you a quote of that, but this is when we have the first documented proof that they were used in for this. Um. This is the first time that we see some kind of fortune telling meaning being assigned to the cards. And uh, in the script that they found, it was actually giving meaning to the cards. So that's the first time that we we saw that in print. Uh, it became popular in the 1780s by Anton Court and Jean Baptiste Alete. The name is spelt with an A, but sometimes. Um, like a nickname, they spelt it with an E because they thought that was clever or something. Mm-hmm. And that was that was in Paris. Petty. Petty. The first deck was the Terror of Marseille. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Attila was the first person to release a terror deck designed for occult purposes around 1798 and had most mostly an Egyptian theme to make it seem more ancient. Mm. Yeah, um, but you would imagine that these probably cost a lot of money. They were hand painted. Wow. Yeah, that's so. true. Well, I mean, I was going to say, like, part of this when you talk about printing, that this was the first time things were printed. I mean, there wasn't a lot of mass printing no. of a lot of things until you get to kind of around this time, a little bit before that, yeah. 1600s. But still, it's you know, yeah. it's, it's a waste paper and printing on things you wouldn't you know what i mean like it'd have to be worth it to print it so it's interesting yeah yeah so the three most common decks used in tarot readings are the terror of marseille the rider Waite smith terror deck sometimes it's called Waite smith sometimes it's called rider Waite. sometimes it's i have never heard smith poor smith <laughs> it's i always hear rider Waite. people are just like smith you can Whatever. Google it. There is a Ryder Smith deck, I believe, or a Waite Smith deck. Interesting. It's always two names. Yeah. But yeah, so um, that is the most common, actually. And then there's the Thoth tarot deck. Wow. Yeah. So Aleister Crowley, who devised the Thoth deck along with Lady Frida Harris, stated the origin of this pack of cards is very obscure. Some authorities seek to put it back as far as the ancient Egyptian mysteries. Others try to bring it forward as late as the 15th or even 16th century. But the only theory of ultimate interest about the terror is that it is admirable symbolic picture of the universe based on the data of the Holy Kabbalah. Okay. Well, he was weird. Aleister Crowley. I would love to do a whole episode on him or yeah. maybe like a multi-part episode because, I mean, he touched upon so much stuff. Yeah. Not You're, not the best man. Not the best man. I've I've yeah. listened to some stuff on him. He's yeah. uh, He was creepy. Oh, I could 
I could tell you some things, but <laughs> maybe not in this podcast. No, this is a family podcast, so yes. I don't know that we can talk about him too much, but maybe a bonus sometime. Yeah. So I thought we should go over what the cards are. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So here's a breakdown. This is the modern day 78 card deck. So we're going to talk about the major arcana first, or the greater secrets, as I said, or trump cards. I don't like that term anymore. Uh, It consists of 22 cards without suits. So they're suitless. So if you were playing poker, you would not get a flush with one of these. Gotcha. Uh, The magician is the first one, right? Mm -hmm. And the high priestess, which some say that it may be a reference to Pope Joan. Okay. Others say it's because of in paganism a lot of times women uh, had the highest role of being the high priestess. But I I think that the cards were probably more the Pope Joan reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Empress, the Emperor, the Hierophant, and in some decks it is named the Pope. Oh, I've never seen that. Yeah. Uh, we have the Lovers, the Chariot, Strength, which historically it was called Fortitude, and in the Thoth deck, it is called Lust. Yeah, that's and, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but it, it makes sense because you don't see any other, you know, cards in here that have names like strength, like an attribute that you would have on yourself, you know? That's true. So it makes sense. Um, the Hermit, Wheel of Fortune, which doesn't have Pat Sajak in it at all. No. Um, Justice, the Hanged Man, which... In almost all decks, shows a man hung upside down by his toes. But the expression on his face makes you feel like he did this to himself for some kind of self-sacrifice. There is also a Christian version of this where the man is supposed to be Judas. Oh. Yeah. Death. Death is a famous card. Everybody hates to see it, but it doesn't mean what you think it means usually. Yeah, it's... It's definitely, a, um, so when I was reading, it's, you know, everyone would say, oh, death means death because, you know, they, in movies, yeah. right? That's what it means. More often it means change, but yeah. it can be hard change. I mean, it, it is a serious card. It's not yeah. a nothing card, but yeah. yeah. But when you see it, it doesn't mean you're going to die. Right, exactly. Right away, yeah. you know. Then we have the temperance, the devil, the tower, the star, the moon, the sun, Judgment, and in some decks, it's spelled uh, J-U-D-G-E-M-E-N-T, and sometimes it's spelled J-U-D-G-M-E-N-T. Okay, they so take out the E. Really odd, um, but I saw that. Then there's the world and the fool. Uh, cards from the magician to the, to the world are numbered in Roman numerals from 1 to 21. While the Fool is the only unnumbered card, sometimes placed at the beginning of the deck and numbered zero, but some other decks give it the number 22. Hmm. So that's where we come up with the 22 major arcana. Yeah, like I said, I think this is where we see that journey of the Fool, you know, from this like naive, you know, guy going out into the world and you know he meets all these characters or becomes different levels and then you end with the world yeah and it's all of us are on this journey and we take this journey many times in our yes. lives and in different areas or in different spots and it's super interesting ladies and gentlemen we are the fool yeah uh, yep that's what the fool that's represents what the fool represents the yep. common man yep Every person. So then the minor arcana, this is going to be a little bit faster. It's also called the lesser secrets. It consists of 56 cards divided into four suits of 14 cards each. So there's 10 numbered cards and four court cards. The court cards are the king, queen, knight, and page or jack in each of the four tarot suits. Uh, The traditional Italian tarot suits are swords, batons, coins, and cups. In modern occult tarot decks, however, as I said, the batons um, suit is often called wands, the rods or staves, while the coin suit is often called pentacles or discs. So 
I'm going to talk. Whereas cups stayed the same. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, cups stayed and swords stayed and the swords, same. Yeah. yeah. Um. So there's just a couple more things to talk about. Uh, divination. So, you know, I was thinking about this. That whole history doesn't really sound very ghostly. There's not much oomph to it, you know. <laughs> but now it kind of does when you really look into the divination part of it itself. So divination is the attempt to gain insight into a question or a situation by way of an occult standardized process or ritual used in various forms throughout history. Diviners ascertain their their interpretation of how a seeker should proceed by reading signs, events, or omens, or through alleged contact with a supernatural agency. That sounds a little bit more ghostly, right? Yeah. Wow. That was a lot of words. It was a lot of words. So you want to sum it up? (laughs) Oh, I don't even know. Uh, Basically, people trying to figure out a greater meaning or understanding or perhaps predict the future using supernatural methods. Yes. Okay. So is, is tarot supposed to be divination or just fortune telling? I would say that it is seen as both by different people. I have seen it used in religious um, ceremonies. In fact, I have used tarot in religious ceremonies. Hmm. Um, How would you use them? So I did what they call tarot magic. And so magic spells are all about symbolism. And I would use the tarot as, as symbols. I wouldn't, you know, I already pre-planned which cards were going to be in. Gotcha. So I didn't like just draw out the cards. So but like. I, but I have done a tarot reading within a circle. Okay. Like, so are you saying, so you're, okay, like we want to, I don't, let's just do it something that you probably didn't do. Like, let's say we wanted to do a ceremony, a magic spell that had to do with like getting better crops. Okay. Would we pick certain, we would pick certain cards that that would relate to yeah. that topic and have them out while we were saying certain things yeah. or doing certain whatevers. Yep, okay. while while in circle. Okay, and sometimes they were um, they were the representative of the god or goddess. Oh, sure, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so you know it was used for that. So that is where tarot can be more more of a religion gotcha. than it is a than it is just for fortune telling. Okay. But divination is more about formal rules and often have to do with more religion, where fortune telling is more about an individual's interpretation mm-hmm. of what they see. Gotcha. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about spreads. There was not much I could find about the history of spreads. Um, and then I'm done. Okay. So there are many different spreads used in tarot. Rebecca, you used a six-card spread. Do you, do you have a name for it? Uh, it is a practical life spread that I okay. found that I, I really like because it's it's six cards, so it's a little bit longer than just the... Sometimes you do like a three-card spread as a short sure. one, but I the six-card gives you a little bit more. I also have a five-card practical advice spread that I use. So if someone oh, wow. has a... Like, I'm having an issue with this particular topic and I want advice about this topic, we can do that one versus... I don't know. I'm just kind of curious about my life and where things are. Then we can do the more general life spread. Hmm. They're just not as involved as uh, some of the other ones. Um, like the one I'm going to talk yes, about. Yes, like the one you're going to talk about. I'm going to, uh, the most popular one is the Celtic cross spread. And I've actually seen it done. And you pointed this out to me. Since then, I've seen it done like three different ways. Yeah. There's not like, I thought there was a universal way, but there is not. Yeah. The way yeah. that I did a Celtic cross, and this is my primary way of doing a reading, was um, was I would put out a card that represented somebody. Now, I, doing the tarot magic, I would get a card that actually symbolically represented this person. So I would say, okay, it's a female, you know, dark eyes, dark hair. It would be, I think, a sword or something. You wow. Know, a queen Never of sword. Never done that. Yeah, so I would pick out that card, but not many people do that, um, and then put a card across it, and then you would start your cross. But there are some people that do three in the center. Mm. Now, um, 
So the Celtic cross spread was first publicized in 1910 in a book uh, called The Pictorial Key to the Tarot by Arthur Edward Waite. Ah. The co-creator of the Rider Waite Smith deck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was also a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Uh which uh, also Aleister Crowley was. Yeah, he form it, formed it or was a big no. part. No, he did. That's right. He came in. No, he actually, um, If I think this is the history of it. I have not done research for this episode for it. But from what I recall, he actually did like a coup. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think he came in and kind of took it over. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, you have a great group and now I'm in charge of it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it all ties into that, but I would like to say one more thing. In my my difference, too, when I was doing Celtic Cross, if I came upon a card that somebody had more questions about, I would draw one card to the left of it, which would mean what brought that to be mm. or, or the past. past. Yeah. And then another card, which was the future or, or what's going to eventually happen. Interesting. That the yeah. man, your readings probably took a while. You should have charged money. It did take a while. I I did um when I would do a reading for somebody, I would do everything. I would before I did a reading with them, I would do their astrological chart, which I would print off and it would be about forty pages. Wow. And I would give that to them. Um, you know, using their whole birth chart and everything like that. Uh astrology is so so cool. Um, love it, don't believe it, but it's so cool. <laughs> um, and um, then I would do um, palm reading and I would do ancient ruins as well. Wow. So can we set aside a day where you do all this for me? I don't believe in it anymore. Yeah, but still. And I no longer have the program on my computer oh. that does it. Well, you could at least do my tarot reading. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe one day I'll do that. Another video. Uh, yep, absolutely. So that's all I got. Okay, well, that was a lot. There's, yeah, right? I, I, it's so interesting that it started as a game and is still played as a game. Yeah. i very curious about all that. Yeah, especially if like the devil card came up or something, you know? Right? Yeah. Hmm. Well, we just said devil card, so that means it's time for a break. I Yeah, definitely <laughs> time for a break. So we'll see you in just a second. Hey, Pat, fall is in the air. Ooh, yeah, it is. Yeah, and that means cooler weather, football, football. and of course, shopping. Shopping? Yeah, back to school shopping, starting college shopping. I got a new job shopping, new season shopping. I just like shopping, shopping. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Change means time to get some new stuff. And I bet our listeners would like some ghostly gear. Oh, yeah. Great idea. What kind of gear are we talking about? I don't know. How about some ghostly t-shirts and sweatshirts? Yeah. And not just ones with the ghostly logo, because those those are really cool. But uh, how about also hashtag Team Believer to really show our team colors? Um, and hashtag Team Skeptic, of course. Mm. So we've got men's and women's styles and even kid and baby sizes. So cute. It is very cute. And I also added a phone case and a water bottle. Nice. <laughs> Where can our listeners get all this great ghostly gear? Mm, that's pretty easy. If you want to get ghostly gear, just go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on merchandise up at the top. Perfect. Go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on merchandise to get your great ghostly gear. All right, we're back. Yep. So I think it is time to take on the debate. Ooh. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. I don't know where this is going to end up, to be honest, because- What do you mean? I don't know. I, I just We're going to see. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Uh, so I'm going to have my debate be things that are about um, the mindset- that people that read tarot cards have or should have. So therefore, they predict the future. 
<laughs> no, is that what you're saying? No, I, mean, I don't say that actually. Oh, okay. I don't believe that it's necessarily telling the future. And that's where I, I don't know what? where this is going to go. Well, that's what the question is. I know. that. It's, so I think that it sometimes comes through that way, just naturally, the way that the cards are set up and mm. the, the readings are. But I don't necessarily think that that's necessarily what they are. I'm going to argue that it's not the cards. It's okay. the person. Yeah, me too. Okay, so, so I, we're done. I, yeah, okay, I was just gonna bye say, everyone. So I, I, it's going to be an interesting exploration to see if this is really a debate or what we think about it. Okay. So, um, but you read cards. I do, but that doesn't mean that I. I always preface it by saying I am not a psychic and I am not here to tell you your future. You're supposed to be a psychic. I know, but I hmm. don't do say that. I don't. I mean, there are people that use tarot that believe that they're psychics and they use the tarot. I think as their conduit i was gonna say conduit i was reading your mind mm-hmm. right there so i but i don't necessarily think that the tarot themselves are supernatural all right well let's let's see where this goes okay so i just wanted to go through qualities that if you were going to read tarot that you should hold in your heart um for both the reader and the questioner and i think that these kind of get to the heart the philosophy of of the tarot and tarot readings. And then maybe that'll help us with what we think they really are. Okay. So first is honesty and trust. Mm. Originally I had these as separate, but I decided they kind of go together. They do. Yeah. So you should be honest with your readings, but you should be careful about how you deliver that honesty. Okay. Because every card has a context, Mm -hmm. you know? So if you, you know, so you might get a reading that's something truly, that you know is bad maybe um but that doesn't mean that it's uh that there isn't a context with that well when i was doing readings i wouldn't do a negative reading so like if the cards came up primarily negative i would brush that off to say that there's negativity amongst the seeker and we need to clear that first Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so you definitely ahead. practice yeah. this. So for me, it's always about finding that context and giving advice, you know, mm-hmm. because this is, a, the the cards are read through the mind of the, the person who's getting the reading and they have their own lived experience. And so what is tragic to them and may, may show up as tragic in the cards it might be something that... It, is actually not that tragic and you could help give them context about it, for example. Um, And it should come as a way to, you should approach tarot readings as from a desire to help people okay, and be helpful. And if you're not coming to it with that in mind, and if you're not coming to it to be helped and to be, you know, to have trust with this person, Mm. um, you're not going to get to, uh, the right reading. Okay. Um, the story I have for this is that my actually my own mother got a reading once at a fundraiser she was at. There was a, a woman doing tarot card readings. I couldn't picture this. I know. It was a psychic. I'm trying, but I can't picture it. <laughs> um, and basically this woman told her she was going to lose her job. Oh. And there's a lot more context in that, of course. But Did she? Um, she did. Wow. She did. Um, so the like nine months later. That. Yeah. Um, and the person, it was good that the person was honest, but I'm, but they didn't really help with ideas of, of exactly what it was. And maybe, I mean, maybe it didn't really mean that. And it's one of those things like when you predict the future, quote unquote, like, are yeah. you then making that future happen? Yeah. Are you influencing it? And so maybe there could have been a more positive. Mm-hmm presentation of that information that then could have changed what happened or maybe you know or yeah sure so you have to be careful yeah that's why i wouldn't do readings for that person more than once a moon cycle Mm -hmm. because i mean she was starting to do stuff in her life depending upon the cards and that's just not right because even then i knew that i was not predicting the future at all i was merely reading the person. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this debate a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I believe that most people do feel that they are being honest when they do give a reading. But the very meaning of the cards are more generic in nature and seem to apply to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
So if I read you one card right now, um, it would make you feel as if, yeah, that's, yeah, I could totally see that happening in my life. Like your mom losing her job. Maybe she was having issues at her job before that, you know, that made her foresee that. And then she would agree with that. Um, so the seeker takes on their own meaning to what the reader is telling them. So, you know, I, I wasn't there for the reading. I don't know if you were sitting there with her. I was not. So what I'm thinking is maybe the maybe the the reader even said something like, you know, there's going to be a change in your job. And your mother, knowing that there were struggles in like in her job, she might have she might have taken that meaning to herself. And that's how she walks away thinking, no, this person said I'm going to lose my job. No, well, no, I think at the time it was basically it's a little again, it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Her her line of work is a little more complicated, but um, she's a CIA agent. (laughs) But no, the person did actually say it. And to me, that was irresponsible. Okay, like they should have said it more generic like you. Yeah, but I'm just about. saying, though, we do take our own meaning and we apply it to our life. Yes, definitely. Or the reader is using what they know of the person mixed with what they know of the card to represent for that interpretation. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel that honesty is difficult in this unless you're doing it purely as a joke. Like I know one card reader, his name is Spiro. He does it purely as a joke. Yes, he just makes things up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But see, to me, I don't think that the, what you're talking about is a joke. I think it can be a real thing and that it's still good. Like like you think Spiro, what Spiro said to me was real? <laughs> no. I, I can't even say what he said to no, me. No, you it's, can't. It's a very adult-orientated he, Yes, he's reading. not something that you can, yeah. But no, this is where the idea that, of course, the card is going to be a more generic card because it has to apply to everyone and that, right, we apply that card to ourselves and our own lives and our own interpretation. And then that's what it means to us. And I don't think that that's bad. I think that that's exactly what it is. Well, I'm going to go further with that later. Okay. Um, And I will too. Yes. (laughs) Saving some of that for later. All right. So number two, rule number two or next thing that you need to do is show respect Show respect to the cards, respect to the questioner, and respect to yourself. If you don't take this, actually, this kind of goes with what you were just saying. Mm -hmm. I think if you don't take the cards seriously, if you don't, and the questioner doesn't take it seriously, then it's not going to work. Like, if you feel like this is just a joke or your heart's not in it, if the questioner is just like, well, this is stupid, none of this means anything, then it won't mean anything. Like to me, like that's, you know and what I mean? That's why like, I wouldn't do negative readings too, because I believe that it was negative influence. They might not believe the cards are going to tell them what they, you know, like what the future is going to hold for them. Mm. So they, so I believe it's a negative bias on there. Now people would get really upset when I was like, nope, not going to do this reading. Mm. They'd be like, no, 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 tell me, tell me. Nope, yeah. not going to tell you at all. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Now I will say I've had, I've had lots of, times in my life where I've had my cards read and to me it's always very clear when it's someone who's just doing it for funny or like Spiro or Mm -hmm. someone that's doing it for money yeah, and not for real because they really feel like this is Mm -hmm. a tool that can be used Um, and so I just wanted to tell a quick story that I had from uh, when I got one time when I got my cards read and it was I was expecting it to be a joke Mm -hmm. I was expecting I wasn't I didn't necessarily come in to it thinking it was going to be something. Um, It was at a Renaissance fair and, um, you know, it's for money. So I thought this is stupid, but okay, whatever, for fun. We'll go in and we'll, I'll have my cards read. And it ended up being fascinating. Mm. And And that's how you got started in this, right? No, 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 no. This was, yeah, this was, you know, I'd already done readings myself and had other readings and everything so that's why you know this was just like ah okay okay let's just do it Mm -hmm. and it was like weird weird reading um just talking about my life i was at that crossroads kind of in my early adulthood where i was kind of leaving behind the young young adulthood and moving into like actually being an adult and they just had this explanation that was very 
crazy <laughs> from for my 20s um, that I, I don't necessarily know that I believe, but it just, it gave this weird explanation to it that uh, I wasn't ready for. I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to go into it, but it was just very much that my energies were being focused um, not on myself and that I needed to refocus my energies on myself. Okay. And it really helped me change the course of my life. Like I was I was going through that in my mind at that time. So it makes sense that that's what would be reflected. And how old were you? Uh, I was like probably late 20s, early 30s, okay. somewhere in there. At pro- yeah, probably so early 30s. So do you think that that's a turning point in most people's lives? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it was like, it, but it was just so helpful to have somebody take that seriously yeah and that it was okay that i was questioning it was okay that i was making huge major monumental changes that everyone in my life was telling me was wrong and bad and stupid and i shouldn't do it and it wasn't like she was saying you should do this or you should do that but it was more like no you've spent the last whatever years doing this and Mm -hmm. now you're going to do something totally different and that's right Okay. And it was just really helpful to me in that moment. Sure. And so to me, if you, again, if you are respectful to the person, to the cards, to yourself, that can be helpful for a reading. So I think that you had a good experience, but do I think they were telling you anything that was in the cards? No. I think they were reading you. I think they were saying here's this person that's in her late twenties, early thirties. What goes on in someone's life at that, at that point, you know, they're, they're going from having a job to having a career. They need to make a choice in their lives to have a career. And they know these little bits and pieces about things. And I'm going to talk about that more, as I said later, because it just fits in one spot much better than it would be for me to yeah. do little bits and pieces to mm-hmm. try to explain my point. Yeah. But I I think that they're reading you as a person. I will also say, though, that I went into this reading making it a point to not reveal anything yeah. personal about myself. And I'm sure that I did. And yeah. And again, actually, what she was talking about didn't necessarily directly relate to anything in my actual life. Like it was really supernatural. It yeah. was like I was traveling universes or I, it was really weird. Mm. Um, but um, but I did make it a point to try try to to not. I've done that, too. Do that. And I've still gotten fooled. Yes. By, it's yeah. It, yeah, it's a thing. OK, let's do my last one. And okay. then we can dive into, I think, the the, the full debate here. Um, so the last part is intuition. OK, so you should trust your gut. Uh, when it comes to what a card means or how it fits. Sometimes the meaning in the little booklet that comes with it just doesn't seem to make sense. Mm -hmm. It's like you read it and then the person's like, what? And you're like, yeah, I don't know. But you know what? Don't just skip it. Don't just be like, ah, well, we'll just ignore that one. (laughs) Like, Keep looking for more understanding. Do some research. um, But also come up with your own understanding of it because I think your own intuition of that can be helpful. Um, But there are some things you can look at to go a little deeper, which would be looking at the meaning of pentacles versus wands or Mm -hmm. the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So someone, I had an example here, like if you get the tower with the three of pentacles, it might mean that massive change is coming, but the breakdown is needed for that success and that new position, right? So kind of, don't just take each card as its own, you know, use your own gut and your own understanding of the person, what they're telling you Mm. to help you understand what it could possibly mean. Um, And again, focus on the questioner and what they're saying, because that's what's most important. So what I would say is, okay, trusting your gut is kind of the problem with reading cards to me. Uh, You stop reading the cards and you start reading people and subject your own bias into the reading, Uh, meaning it's not all about the cards when everything is said and done, meaning, well, let me let me give you an example. Okay, let's say you sat down with somebody and you and you had cards and if you were blind and deaf, 
you would be able to do a reading based upon the cards if you could if they were braille or something like that but the problem is is that you see and you hear so you see that this person is this age you see that this person you might even see this person looks like they might have this sexual orientation might might have you know numerous different things that you can then search your mind and figure out details. Now, if you took the cards away and you sat down with the person, could you come up with the same reading? Yes, you don't need the cards. You're reading the person based upon what you feel the person is like, which is basically your mind doing the math. Okay, so <laughs> I this is where I think we come to our point of slight disagreement. Okay. Because to me, I think the cards are there as a helpful tool mm -hmm. and they help us unlock things that we wouldn't maybe unlock if we just had a conversation with a person. So I, I was, I'm was i going to read a quote from someone that I found that I thought kind of re like represented okay. some of my thoughts. I was like, whoa, it's like she's reading my mind. Her name is Tif Tiffany Maloney and it's mindbodygreen.com. She says, the cards are archetypal in every way. Young, Carl Jung, wrote that archetypes are the unconscious images of the instincts themselves. In other words, that they are patterns of instinctual behavior. The cards represent universal truths. A true reading is not fortune telling. It's good psychology. The exact same cards drawn for one person may take on an entirely different meaning if drawn for someone else. It's simply the key to unlocking the subconscious mind. Okay, I agree with that, but when you look at a deck of tarot, tarot cards, you look at it as a mystical thing that is going to read your future. When you go to a, a psychologist, you don't look at the psychologist as a mystical person that's going to read your future. Yeah. And therefore, it's inherently bad. I mean, I enjoy reading the cards, but I enjoy it more like Spiro would, mm -hmm. where it's totally like, I'm just going to ramble on, and this might in, this might have something to do with your life, but it might not. But I want you to know ahead of time, before we start this reading, that I have no magic powers, that I have no special abilities that you do not possess, and all I'm going to be doing is talking to you. And I literally say almost the same thing. Yeah. So before I do a reading, I also want people to know that I don't have any mystical powers. I don't believe that I have any psychic ability and nothing that I'm about to tell them do I think is any like concrete proof of what's going to happen in the future. But the problem is they don't believe you. I will say that does sometimes happen. It depends yeah. on the person, but they do. It, it, I, I do think the cards sometimes have that thing where you they kind of naturally lend themselves to doing that and and that's where i like the practical advice spread um because it doesn't necessarily go into that so much yeah well i have a friend that i'm going to talk about in a second um he's a mentalist i'm not going to say his name because i'll be you know breaking what is his but uh <laughs> he like i i was with him when he did some tricks for people mind reading tricks and stuff and uh, they, they're like, wow, that's like, you're doing magic. And he said, no, I, I am not, I'm not reading your mind. This is all, this is all tricks. And they still didn't believe him. And they wanted to know more. The problem is, is that people, people don't think that you're ever telling the truth until you tell them that you're not going to be telling the truth. Then it's all the truth. <laughs> well, it's kind of reminds me a little bit of um, um, the magicians. Penn and Teller. Oh, Penn and Teller. Yeah, reminds me a little bit of Penn and Teller, where they always uh, when we I saw their show, it was yeah. like we are not. This is not actual magic, and they will actually sometimes even show you how a trick is done. Yeah, so that you really people really do believe well hopefully. they could afford to do that <laughs> they can uh they are also kicked out of a lot of the magic community i True. i love pen pen is an inspiration to me um but yeah they are not allowed in the magic castle and stuff or not allowed to be members of there's like strict rules because they have divulged secrets but okay so what i wanted to talk about is this and this might be a little bit longer than our typical uh, point, 
but I think it really serves to really sum up my thoughts on things. Um, my question that I have, my questions that I have are, does everyone have the ability to read tarot? Is everyone equal? Where does the extra power come from that makes some people better than others? Do you want me to give my answers to these? I mean, or, they're more rhetorical, but if you want to, you can. So my opinion is, yes, everyone has the ability to read tarot. No, not everyone is equal just because not everyone is as good at um, interpretation and having a conversation with somebody that's um, therapeutic. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about something called cold reading. This is the secret to psychics, most most psychics. Sorry if you're a psychic listening to the podcast. I, I believe in you, just all those other people I don't. Mm -hmm. No, I would probably say that the better the reader of the card is, the better the reader of the seeker is. Uh, there's a technique that is used by mentalists, psychics, and fortune tellers, and mediums to some extent, on people they have never met before. It is called cold reading. I learned about it from that mentalist friend that I brought up, uh, and he's going to remain nameless. Cold, reading, cold readings commonly employ high-probability guesses, quickly picking up on signals as to whether the, their guesses are in the right direction or not, then emphasizing and reinforcing chance connections and quickly moving on from missed guesses. Without prior knowledge, a practiced cold reader can quickly obtain a great deal of information by analyzing the person's body language, age, clothing, or fashion, hairstyle, gender, sexual orientation, religion, ethnicity, level of education, manner of speech, place of origin, and the list just goes on. They use all these things. Um, we were talking about psychology. Well, psychologists believe that uh, this works because of the Barnum effect. Uh, it states that people give high accuracy ratings to descriptions of their personality, even though the st statements are generalizations that could apply to almost anyone. This effect is an example of a much broader thing called acceptance phenomenon, which describes the general tendency of humans to accept almost bogus feedback. So a related and more general phenomenon is that of subjective validation. Subjective validation occurs when two unrelated or even random events are perceived to be related because of a belief, a expectation, or hypothesis demands a relationship. For example, while reading a horoscope, people actively seek a correspondence between its its contents and their perception of their personality. That's also a big thing, um, the perception of their personality. We all believe we're good people. We're not all good people, unfortunately. Um, psychologist Bertram R. Forer uh, gave a test to 39 of his students. He told them that when they finished the test, he would give them a sketch based upon the results. This was supposed to be something that would pinpoint who they were as a person. Instead, he told all 39 students the same exact thing, and they rated it on an average of 4.3 out of a possible 5 for accuracy. Remember, these are people studying psychology, uh, they should have had a heightened expectation of something like this. They should have seen it coming. Or they're all very similar types because they're all studying the same subject. Well, so what was interesting is for a test, I I told Rebecca all these 13 things. And I do work as a counselor. So. And what did you say? I, th I thought it was very accurate. You thought it was very accurate. Yes. yes. So here are the 13 things. And just imagine that you are having a reading and somebody slips one or two or ten of these things into the reading in various different locations and then looks at how you respond to it to know if you are agreeing with this or not, they could base a whole reading off of this. So I'm going to start. You have a great need for other people to like and admire you. You have a tendency to be critical of yourself. You have a great deal of unused capacity, which you have not turned to your advantage. 
While you have some personality weaknesses, you are generally able to compensate for them. Your sexual adjustment has presented problems for you. Disciplined and self-controlled outside, you tend to be worrisome and insecure inside. At times, you have serious doubts as to whether you have made the right decision or done the right thing. You prefer a certain amount of change and variety and become dissatisfied when hemmed by restrictions and limitations. You pride yourself as an independent thinker and do not accept other statements without satisfactory proof. You have found it unwise to be too frank in revealing yourself to others. At times, you are extroverted, affable, sociable, while at other times, you are introverted, wary, and reserved. Some of your aspirations tend to be pretty unrealistic, and security is one of your major goals in life. So which one of those rings out the most to you? Oh, I think there's probably several. <laughs> so it's hard to hard to pick one. Um I I guess as I as I go forward in life, I find it unwise to be too frank in revealing myself to others. <laughs> mm. So then, you know, if you were to show a very positive response to that when I said that, mm-hmm. uh then I might know that that's that's a place that I could take this this reading into. And now you had said to me um, that I think of this as being um, like people trying to hurt somebody or something like that, whereas you're just like, no, I don't. It's just friendly reading, right? Well, um, I think that the friendly reading is also hurting people. So that's where I disagree. Like I... I think you've made a good, it, this is a good, I think, thing to, to point out because I, I want people to not um, waste money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, I think it's important that we put it out there. You know, I don't believe that just tarot reading is necessarily predictive of the future. You shouldn't base life, just big life decisions just on that. Um I think you should be careful of people that are fraudsters out there. Mm-hmm. I, I do think there are people that are gen, genuine psychics, um, but they're hard to find, especially when you're paying money. I do not believe that there I, are. I know, I know. But I don't think that, I think that's outside of tarot. Like, but here's I the thing don't too. Think that that's what it is. So I do think it's a warning. Here's the thing too. As long as you understand that these people could be doing this cold reading right. thing to you, and you're at the Renaissance Fair and you're like, you know, that would be great entertainment value for me. I'm going to pay the $25 to get a reading. Um, then have at it. But just know that there are other things that they're doing. They're not reading the cards. They're reading you. Yeah. No, I do think that's important to okay. to keep that in mind, especially when when we're talking money. Yeah. Absolutely. But when it comes to you wanting to do it for yourself or with your friends... Um, I actually think it can be helpful. I, I'm trying to decide if I want to save this. Maybe this might be appropriate for closing arguments, what I'm going to say. Okay. But what I want to say, though, is yeah. let's say you gave a reading for your friend and said to that person, you're going to meet a guy by the end of the month. Do you think that every guy that she meets within that month, she's going to be looking at as a potential mate? I would never tell somebody that. That is not the kind of thing that I would have in a reading. I The cards don't necessarily usually say that as yeah. their meaning. They're not quite that specific. But what I'm saying, though, is even the most innocent idea has an effect on people's lives. And I think that that should be taken seriously. I agree. So, again, I think I'm going to save my philosophy. Okay. All right. I'm well, hoping I can get it done in a minute. I don't know. All right. Well, let me get my phone ready. <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself too much. All right. That brings us to closing arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time. We will time each other on our cell phones to keep each other honest. What was the question again? Do tarot card, Can tarot cards be used to predict the future? Okay. All right, so you ready? I'm ready. You have one minute. Okay. And go. 
I do not think that tarot cards can predict the future. However, I do think they can be an excellent way to make connections in your mind that you wouldn't make otherwise. I think what happens when you're reading tarot is that you read this card and your mind thinks of A and then you read another card and it thinks of 26 and you had never thought of A and 26 at the same time before and now all of a sudden your brain's like, oh my gosh, yeah, you're right. A did affect 26 and how is how is that going to now affect, you know, uh, uh, Roman numeral three that I'm finding out later. Like, I think that it's a way to open your mind to, uh, and make connections between ideas that you had never made before. And that is powerful and amazing. And it's actually a similar to a kind of thing that I do, um, in my own work that I, I do with people about their careers. So just don't let anyone steal your money. Okay. <laughs> That's my last point. Wow. Um, okay. But you kind of said in the beginning that you don't believe it can. So no, I we're we're both a we're skeptical both on the same, on the same side, side of this one. Yeah. So you uh, oh. you guys will be the ones to vote yeah. to determine whether or not you believe. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do with us this time. Should I give my reading as well? I guess we didn't do that. My zero to ten. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Give a rating. Yeah. I'm going to give it a f- four. Okay. The tarot, cards, the tarot cards can be used to predict the future. Right. Because I do think there is kind of a universal truth in ourselves that sometimes, again, it's not like predicting the future to- like in a supernatural way, but like you kind of have an instinct of what might happen and the cards help bring that out. Um, and then, hey, you might change your behavior because of that too. So, you know, there is a little bit of that in there, but it's not a supernatural thing, but which I don't is think why that's I the put cards. it under four. I don't think that's the cards. I think it's the person. You yeah. Know, but I think so. the cards bring that out. Okay. Okay. All right. I give you ready? It a zero. Okay. Okay. <laughs> give it a zero. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yes. Okay. And go. So my first thought when we started to talk about this episode is that if I were to give you 1,000 readings, each reading would be slightly different, meaning that I would be predicting over 6,000 different things that are going to happen in your life. It's just not true. Um, Sometimes things happen by mistake. Sometimes things are accidental. Sometimes you just get that. Now, I would like to say I think this is a dangerous tool because of the belief that people have. And no matter what you say, people will think that they are being told their future by these cards, no matter what you as the reader say. I believe it's dangerous. I believe you affect people's lives in a way that you would not affect their lives without the cards. So I do not believe that it is a good thing to do. There you go. All right. You you made it. I did, yeah. All right. So maybe so, we should make the question are tarot cards dangerous? No. It's we've been <laughs> we have had this whole episode about about the predictiveness of it. I would win if we changed it. Okay. So you don't think that they're dangerous at all? Well, I suppose they can be, but that's the user, not the cards themselves. Mm. Mm. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I think sometimes it is, but I think oftentimes, like maybe out of 10 people, three of them would would not have the capacity to be able to handle such a thing as that and to know that, no, this is not real. And out of those three people, you could negatively affect one of them. And even even that is just horrible to me, my thoughts. So okay. so thank you so much for listening. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best advertisement. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. We want to make sure that we bring you every possible episode that we can. We have a lot planned out for you. And so many exciting things. Things, oh my God, I cannot believe some of the topics that we're going to be covering. So do you want to tell them what the next episode is going to be about? Oh, yeah. It's the one that I suggested. Yeah. Alcatraz. 
Alcatraz. So excited yes. to do this. Because I have taken a tour and I have heard about the ghosts. I've taken a tour and I've heard about the ghosts. And I can't wait to talk about them. We're going super ghost. This episode wasn't as ghostly. Supernatural, not as ghostly. We're going super mega ghost next episode. <laughs> mega ghostly. Mega ghostly. When does it come out? Um, it comes out on January 22nd. Absolutely. So do you have anything else you want to say? Um, just two things. One, please send us those ghost stories that you yes. have. Info at ghostlypodcast.com. I really can't wait to read them. And number two, if you've got a moment, please rate and review us. Uh, it really helps people find the podcast and kind of gives us uh, some credibility with those potential listeners out there. Yeah, it's, so. a, it's a great way to give back to us. I mean, we've given you our time we've given you our money we've <laughs> hey, given you our blood sweat we and tears. don't need anything from you but we <laughs> would love your review if you have the time <laughs> i need stuff no i'm just kidding yeah we would we would love to have you review and if you give us a review we might read it on the air as well Ooh, we might yeah um i think that's about it right i think so oh no there is one more thing oh one more thing Mondo just put out his album. That's right. He he started a thing called Life Bomb. We're going to post a link to where you can find his album. But uh, if you're on Apple Music, you can look for Life Bomb. If you're on Spotify, I believe you could look for Life Bomb. Um, just look for Life Bomb. Yeah, it's Mondo and his music. And I think we played a sample of something a few uh, some yeah. earlier episode, but uh, it's super. It's not my typical type of music that I listen to, yeah. but I really like it. It's just I don't know. It's very interesting. So yeah, definitely support Mondo. Mondo yes. Mondo's a great guy, and uh, we will post two things. We will post a place where you could purchase his stuff, but we will also post a a his website. Yes, and he even has a video. He does. A it's, really good video. Yeah. So maybe three things we'll maybe. post. And um, yeah. All so right. until next time, stay ghostly. Bye.